I'm Sanda from Croatia, from Croatian Experience with Sanda. In today's video, I'm going to talk about money, about Croatian money. This is the first video of a small series of short videos I plan to make on the topic of Croatian money. I'm going to talk about how much Croatian money is worth, the conversion to euros or to the US dollars, and how much money you need to take to Croatia and what kind of money you need to come and travel here. So make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can receive notifications of the upcoming videos. And now let's jump right into it. I'm going to show you the money. Last week I did my best to collect all the money we have here. All the banknotes we have and all the coins. This is one kuna. This is the base of all creation money. One kuna is like one dollar. So this is one kuna. It's like one dollar except it's worth approximately 15 cents. So why on earth is Croatian currency called kuna and what does it mean? It means Martin and if you look carefully you can see a Martin behind one kuna. Skins of Martin were medieval units of value. People were paying taxes even in Roman times in continental Croatia close to Hungary in the skins of Martin because they were highly valuable goods. And when Croatia became an independent country, kuna became the name of our national currency. One kuna, the basic unit, has 100 lipa. Lipa is a subunit of kuna and lipa means a linden tree, which used to be found and planted close to the marketplaces in Croatia. So we have kuna, and lipa. The coins we have in Croatia are 10 lipa, 20 lipa, 50 lipa, and then the bigger ones. One kuna, two kunas, and five kunas. So the biggest coin we have in Croatia is that of five kunas, which has a bear on it, a European brown bear. The five kuna coin is approximately worth around 70 cents. So the thing about creation coins is that one, two and five kuna coin have an animal on them and all the coins which are smaller than one kuna, which are lipas, the subunits, have plants on them. In Croatia you can still find coins of one and two lipas, but they don't produce them anymore even though they circulate. And now I'm going to show you creation banknotes. Let's start from the smallest one. It's the 10 kuna banknote. Uh, on all Croatian banknotes, there is a famous person from Croatia's history on the front side and on the back side, there is an important monument from Croatian culture, architecture and history. So on 10 kuna banknote, there is a bishop, a Catholic bishop from Istra from the region of Istra, which in English is Istria. This bishop's name was Jure Dobrila and he advocated for Croatia when Croatia was under foreign rule. On the back side of Ten Kuna note, there is one of the most famous pieces of architecture in Croatia and it's the Colosseum in Pula. This monument is actually smaller than the Colosseum in Rome but it's better preserved. And even today, there are many events and concerts taking place there. And now let's continue with the 20 kuna banknote. The famous person on the 20 kuna banknote is Count Jelacic. In Croatia, his full title and name is Ban Josip Jelacic. Count Josip Jelacic is a familiar face, may maybe for some of you, uh, because he is riding a horse on the most famous monument on the most famous square in Croatia, which is the main square in the city of Zagreb, Croatia's capital. And on the other side of the banknote, there is an Elms Manor in the city of Vukovar. And the ceramic Vucedol Dav, which is dated from 2800 to 2500 BC. And now let's continue with a bit of blue. The 50 kuna banknote has one poet. 
The poet's name is Ivan Gundulic and he is the most famous Croatian Baroque poet. On the other side of the banknote, there is the old city of Dubrovnik and the rector's palace. And for when you come to Croatia, the name of the city is Dubrovnik. Do not pronounce it Dubrovnik or Dubrovnik or whatever else. Remember, Dubrovnik. Bonus pro tip for you. And now a bit of orange, a 100 kuna banknote. Here you can see another count, Ivan Mazuranić. He is one of the most important people in Croatia's history. He is a famous politician, lawyer, linguist and poet. And the curious thing about him is that he was the first count who did not come from an old Croatian noble family. And on the other side of the banknote, there is St. Vitus Cathedral, or in Croatian, Catedrala Sveto Vida, which is in my city of Rijeka, and its specific octagonal layout. So the 200 kuna banknote is brown, and you pronounce it kuna, not kuna, like I did a bit earlier. The famous person on this banknote is Stjepan Radić. He was a Croatian politician, a very famous politician, but he was unfortunately shot in parliament by a radical Serbian politician and he died from a stomach wound several weeks later. He also played a big part in Croatia's a bit more recent history. And on the other side of the banknote, there is the old general command building in Osijek, a bit difficult to remember and to pronounce, and the layout of the city fortress called Tvrđa. And now let's continue with the 500 kuna banknote, which is green and has another famous poet, Marko Marulic from Split. Marko Marulic was a famous Croatian national poet and Renaissance poet. On the other side of the note, there is Diocletian's palace in Split. Roman Emperor Diocletian saw how beautiful it was on the Adriatic coast of Croatia, so he even built his palace here. That's one more reason why you should come to Croatia. If it was good for an emperor, it's great for you too. This 500 kuna bill is great for when you want to tip your waiter. <laughs> Just kidding, it's a bit too much. But if you want to make somebody's day, go for it. And the last and the most valuable banknote is 1000 kuna banknote, which is worth approximately 150 US dollars. This purple beautiful banknote has another famous person from Croatia's history. He is Ante Starčević, a politician and a writer who laid the foundation for Croatia's nationalism. And on the other side of the banknote, there is a monument to King Tomislav. King Tomislav is Croatia's first king. And there is also the cathedral in Zagreb, which is a Gothic cathedral from 13th century. One interesting thing about Croatia's banknotes is that they have these small symbols here, and this small square over here contains Croatia's anthem written in super tiny letters. So if you're coming to Croatia, please do not have this with you because you probably won't be able to do anything with it unless you go to some fancy shop and buy something expensive. Usually sometimes people won't even accept it. Don't try to go to bakery to pay for a sandwich with this, for example. <laughs> but do not do that. <laughs> even 500 kuna bank... Kuna, I said kuna again, it's kuna. 500 kuna banknotes are also quite rare. And to prove my point, I will tell you a detail written on both of these banknotes. So, as you can see, these banknotes are well preserved. They're, I think, better preserved than all the other ones I have. Definitely better than this wrinkled 20 kuna banknote. But, this wrinkled 20 kuna banknote was printed in 2012. And also this one, the 10 kuna banknote, which is also quite wrinkled, dirty and grey. And to compare them with these two banknotes, these are super well preserved, straight, white, 
well, this one is greenish, but <laughs> it should be like that. And they were printed in 1993. So these two well-preserved, beautiful banknotes were printed 25 years ago. 25 years ago. That says something about how many of these people are using in Croatia. So I think this proves my point. If you come to Croatia, do not use these ones. And if you must, have this. But the best thing to do is to use banknotes from 10 kunas to 200 kunas. That way, wherever you come and whatever you buy, people will have enough change to give it back to you. And you won't be stuck with one huge banknote you can't really do anything with, except look at how beautiful and purple it is. I hope you had a lot of fun looking at money with me. I will include the names of the people and the things I mentioned in the description below this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos about Croatia. And if you want to learn Croatian, let me know. You can find my email in the description below this video. I teach Croatian online through Skype lessons and I have a Croatian course for Spanish speakers. So if you're a Spanish speaker, find my website below. And if you're not, email me. If you liked all this money and the stories I told you about it, then press the like button. Until next time, bye-bye, do widzenia!